Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about being on YouTube for two years. So, okay, <laughs> it's kind of officially been longer, I'll be honest. So I started my YouTube channel in about 2015, 16, something around there. Uploaded a video, it got 400 views overnight. I freaked out, deleted it and didn't do anything for about another two years. And then in 2017, we moved to Miami, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go to Miami and do lots of vlogs and cool travel content and get lots of videos from Miami. Did that for a couple of months. When we came back to Europe over summer, I had one of my friends basically laugh at me in front of all my other friends about how stupid it was I was doing YouTube, how boring my videos were, how bad it was, all the rest of it. And then I stopped for another two years. And I basically started properly in January 2020, so it's been two years of me uploading videos basically three times a week. So I try to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I have missed a couple of videos, I'll be honest, here and there. Maybe things were going on with family, maybe we were too busy, maybe whatever it was, but pretty much three videos a week for two years. And I kind of want to talk about my experience and the lessons that I have learned over these last two years so that I can help anybody who might be starting YouTube soon and kind of want to have some tips to help them along the way. So with that being said, tip number one is to don't give a sh about what anybody else says about you. Literally, I know it's so hard and I was, so I'm now 33, I was 31 when I eventually booked up the courage to do YouTube and not give a sh if anybody liked it or not, if people laughed at me, if people found it boring or stupid. So 31 is a ripe old age to start, but it's never too late. So if you're my age, it's absolutely fine. If you're older or younger, it's absolutely fine. Do what makes you happy. And I know a lot of people say that, and that's all well and good, but it's actually hard when you feel like your actual friends are laughing at you for doing something that you're passionate about and something that you enjoy. So try your hardest not to care about what people think. And I know that's hard. Like I said, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I was one of those people who cared too much about what people think and now I try not to as much. I'm not going to say I completely don't give a shit because I do, obviously. But um, yeah, if there's somebody who you think is laughing at you or making fun of you or who's not going to support you or I don't know, just try not to listen to it. I'm not going to say it means they're a bad person or a bad friend. I don't think this person was a bad friend. I think they just didn't realise how detrimental their comments would be to me and how it would stop me doing YouTube for another two years. So it's not about them being bad, it's just about maybe they're not the right person to support you in your YouTube journal, journey, sorry. So yeah, try and find at least one person who supports you, who watches your videos, who gives you feedback, who helps you with thumbnail ideas, who maybe wants to be in your videos and make them fun as well. So try and find at least one person who supports you, but try to ignore anybody who might want to bring you down and make fun of you and finds it funny. That's tip number one. Number two is to be yourself. So again, this took me a while to learn. So I think the first at least six months, I would make sure I had makeup on. I'd make sure that I had like big studio lights. I'd make sure that it was absolutely quiet in the house. If Jeremy rustled, I'd be so annoyed at him for making a noise. Um, I just wanted my videos to be perfect. And do you know what? Life is not perfect. People are not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm sure you're not perfect. So it's it's unrealistic to want to especially start YouTube and have absolutely perfect videos. I think people like authentic people, people like to watch people who are real, who are just getting on in life. And as like I say that it's a Sunday afternoon, I'm literally wearing grey joggers. This jumper I've had since I was probably 18 or 20. And I'm just, you know, sat on the floor chatting to you guys. I'm not, I'm gonna just straighten my hair this morning. That's literally what I've done to look nice. But yeah, just try and be authentic to you. And if your, you know, if your authentic self is wearing makeup, having your hair fancy, wearing beautiful dresses, doing that whole thing, absolutely go for it. If your authentic self is gaming, do that. If your authentic self is whatever it is, try and just be as you as possible because there is only one you in the world and you just need to showcase that and be you and that's what people will hopefully fall in love with. Tip number three is to experiment with ideas. So I, like I said, I've been doing three videos a week for two years. That's a lot of videos. And I think the thing that I've realized is that you can kind of post any video. So I know that some people try to pigeonhole themselves into one like niche, one category, and that's brilliant. But I think what's worked well for me is actually trying lots of different things. So I've talked about fashion, I've talked about um, Miami, I've talked about travel, I've talked about dyslexia, I've talked about my miscarriages and abortion, I've talked about um, camera equipment, photography, business, um, 
I mean, books, I've talked about so many different things and I think that's, for me, that works really well for me. So I'm not just focusing on one thing. I'm not getting bored with my content. I'm not running out of ideas. I always have new ideas because I let myself talk about anything. And I know that some people might say, okay, if you niche down, you'll grow quicker. Yes, that's probably true. If you talk just about makeup, you probably will grow quicker. If you talk just about fashion or travel or gaming or whatever it is, if you have a niche, you probably will grow faster because people click on your channel and they see that the whole channel is talking about that one thing that they're also interested in, so they will subscribe. But for me, I mean, and that works for so many people, but for me personally, I have loved being able to talk about so many different things and it's actually made my channel grow as well in different ways because people are watching certain videos that had I been like, so at the beginning, for example, at the beginning, I was like, every Monday, I'm gonna post about photography. Every Wednesday, I'm gonna talk about like somewhere in Miami, cause I was living there at the time. And every Friday, I'm gonna um, do a vlog or something, whatever it was. So I was like, photography, travel and vlogs. And it meant that for <laughs> three to six months, however long it was, I didn't talk about anything else. And it kind of got me stuck in a bit of a rut. And then I thought, do you know what? I can talk about anything. So I bought a Kindle, um, just randomly, had nothing to do with that idea, but I bought a Kindle and did a video talking about it and unboxing. And it's got like 25,000 views or 28,000 views, something like that. And it's something that had I been like, no, I don't talk about Kindles, I would not have got those views and grown from that one video. Um, I also did a video that's gone kind of crazy as well for me, it's talking about Buzzoid. I bought Instagram followers at one point about two years ago. Again, I think that's got maybe 30,000, maybe even more by now views, which is brilliant for my channel growth. And again, had I had that mindset of, I only talk about travel and photography, I wouldn't have done a buzzword video and got 30,000 views, whatever it was. So I do think it's good to experiment, obviously keep it within you. So I'm never gonna do a video about a car. I'm never gonna do a video, or well, maybe if I got a nice car, but I'm never gonna do a video, for example, about golfing, about, you know, football, about cars, about golf, about, um, I'm trying to think of other things I don't care about. I don't know, like I'm not gonna do videos about those. I do videos about my life and whether that's a Kindle unboxing, whether it's new clothing, whether it's hiking a mountain, whether it's talking about my dyslexia, talking about like health issues or like everything I talk about is to do with my life. So it's very varied because people are, you know, everybody has varied lives and not everybody just focuses on one thing. So I think that's kind of the way that I've gone. So basically the long story short with that one is to experiment with what you're posting about, what you're making videos about and try and do something that you enjoy, of course, but don't niche down too early, too quickly and miss out on other opportunities. So number four is to plan your videos. And this is a new lesson for me. I've spent the past two years not planning my videos. And it means that if I'm talking about an item of clothing, I'll say, oh, well, I can't remember how much it was, but I'll leave it on screen. Or like, well, I can't remember what this thing was called, but I'll leave it on screen. Or like, I'm, I've just not been super prepared. And one of my kind of intentions, I guess, for this year is to prepare my YouTube channel more, my videos more. So at the moment, I'm sat with a book in front of me and I have my bullet points there for me to talk through. Now, this is something that last week I would not have done, but now I really want to try and plan my videos more and feel a little bit more certain about what I'm saying. Now, obviously that's easy for sit down videos like this, but if you are you know, doing a vlog channel where you're traveling around and visiting lots of different things, it's harder to plan because you don't really know what's gonna happen in that day. But I think something is to kind of plan the ideas and maybe the outcome. So, you know, start off in the morning. Hi guys, today we're gonna to go to a zoo and I'm looking forward to seeing X, Y, Z. And then you go to the zoo and see X, Y, Z. And then you come home from the zoo and you talk about your experience and if you'd recommend it, the good things, the bad things. So even though you're not planning your day as in, you know, because things go wrong, maybe it starts raining, maybe you drop food on your shirt, maybe, you know, there's all these different things that are gonna happen. But I think having some sort of structure to your videos is really helpful for your self of filming and also for the audience watching, they kind of feel like they know where the story is going a little bit. So yeah, I'd recommend trying to plan. Um, I don't particularly script exactly what I'm gonna say, but just plan ideas and just have it a little bit more clear in your mind. Tip number five is to use copyright free music. Now this has been <laughs> a pain, I'll be honest. So. At the beginning of my YouTube journey, I just went on YouTube and searched for, you know, uh, copyright free music for vlogs, copyright music for 
videos and all these kind of things and I found lots of videos and the problem with doing that is that you know after a year, if you download that music and you use it after a year or so they could then change the copyright so that then if you use those songs they take the AdSense money from your videos and I know when you're first starting when you've got 10 subscribers and you think no one's ever going to watch my videos it's never going to become monetized who gives a shit well actually it might take a year two years five years at some point you will become monetized and that music that you've used you're now not earning the AdSense from that video. So I found um, music on Look Rembo on YouTube. I'll leave it linked down below, his channel. Um, but it's very kind of chill. I don't know how to describe music. <laughs> but it's really nice. I've really enjoyed using his music and at the moment it's still copyright free. Now I know there are websites like Epidemic Sound where you pay a certain amount per month I believe or maybe per year and you have access to their audio library with lots of amazing music. But for me at the moment, I've only just started making money from YouTube. So I'm gonna be doing a video talking about that soon, about how much I'm earning. But for the moment, I'm not earning enough for me to pay for Epidemic Sound. It's something I might do in the future, but for the moment, I'm quite happy with the music that I found on YouTube. So yeah, just be careful. Try and find copyright free music. Don't use any kind of you know, music that's in the charts, like an actual, you know, like a Britney Spears song, you'll not be able to get monetized from those videos in five years time. And you don't know, like, it's, it's interesting because my kind of Kindle videos and my Buzzword videos, I had no idea they'd get 20, 30,000 views. So had I used some like Britney Spears music, and why am I saying Britney Spears when she's not had music out for like 15 years? Whatever, someone else's music, those videos that have got lots of views and are now earning me money, I would not be earning money from them because the, mu because the money, sorry, would go to the artist instead. So that's definitely something to pay attention to, is making sure that the music you use, you're allowed to use and you can also get monetized later on. Tip number six is to look at your analytics. So there's two sides to this. Right at the beginning, I was checking my analytics every single morning. It was one of the first things I did was check my analytics. How many subscribers have I got? How many views have I got? which videos are doing well, how many views has my latest video got, all that good stuff. And now I do check in the mornings, but it's a quick like, how many subscribers? Okay, how much revenue? Let's go to the next thing. So I spend maybe a minute at the moment looking on there every morning. I used to spend maybe 10, 15 minutes. And so there is definitely a balance between the two, but something I will do now is I'll have maybe an hour and I'll deep dive into my YouTube analytics. I'll look at which videos are doing well. I'll look at click through rate. I will look at revenue. I'll look at where the video views are coming from. So if it's coming from YouTube search, Google search, wherever else. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting because by looking at your analytics, you can see which videos are performing well. So for example, my Kindle unboxing did well. So then I did a Kindle three month or six month review and that also did well. My first Buzzoid video did well, so I did a second Buzzoid video. So you can kind of see which videos in your channel are doing well and which ones you can talk about more and more. Having said that, I wouldn't focus too much on that. So with the Kindle video, it did really well. I could have quite easily bought three or four different Kindles and done more Kindle unboxings and compared them and talked about them and like the pros and cons. And, you know, I could have really <laughs> done a lot of videos about the Kindle because that was obviously one that did well for me. But I'm not a big reader. And I bought the Kindle and I enjoy using it, but I don't use it every single day enough to have 10 different Kindles and different reading devices and compare them all and do that whole thing. So it's definitely worth looking at the analytics, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do content based on that because it's still got to be authentic to you. So that kind of goes back to point number three about experimenting. So I experimented and did a Kindle video. I then looked at my analytics and did a second Kindle video but then I'm gonna be true to myself, which was point number two, and not do 10 other Kindle videos. So, you know, it's all kind of a, it's kind of a merge of all these different things that you kind of need to keep an eye on. So definitely do look at your analytics, but don't look at them too much so that you, that's all you're doing is planning videos around which ones are doing well. Try and stay true to yourself and authentic to yourself. So point number seven <laughs> is thumbnails and titles. Now this is one that I know it's so important, it's so, so important. I literally click on videos just because of their thumbnail. And I feel like I could be up in my game with my thumbnails, but I'm actually quite happy with them. So what I did was the first three months, I'd say, I tried different things, different colors, different layouts, different kind of style, I guess, to my videos. Sorry, my legs are going numb again. And so for the first three months, I tried lots of different things. And then I found a thumbnail that I quite liked the layout of. 
So having a white block along the bottom with black text and then photographs and graphics and things on the background. So once I found that, once I designed it and enjoyed it, I then made thumbnails for the first three months worth of content so that they all look the same from basically January 2020. So all of my thumbnails look the same and it's something that I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. Um, I know that if you were to read blogs and other people and, you know, watch YouTube videos with advice, I'm sure they would say don't do that because I think, you know, people like to be surprised and see something different and have something exciting to look at. Whereas I like the consistency, I like how easy it is, I like how... Um, I don't know, all of my videos look the same. If you see my thumbnail, you probably know it's mine, if you know my work. So that's something I've done. It's probably controversial. So you'll have to think about that yourself in terms of if you have a layout that you use every single time, or if you change it completely every single time. So that's up to you. But that is something that's really, really important with YouTube videos. And the title as well. So I'd recommend with the title to try and use the 100 characters that you have. I personally put the first maybe five, six words in capitals and then the rest of the words I put with capital first letter, but then, not baby, what's it called? Lowercase for the rest of the word. Um, and try and use keywords. So for this one, for example, I might be putting two years on YouTube, YouTube analytics, YouTube tips, how to grow on YouTube, something around there so that people who are searching for that kind of topic will find my video. So try and use keywords in your YouTube videos. Something that wasn't on my list, but I'm gonna quickly add it in here, is to use tags. I know at some point there was videos saying that tags don't mean anything, they don't work. I've used them and I would recommend using them. Tip number eight is to start now, learn later. So when I started YouTube, I had a really crappy camera. It was a travel camera I'd had for maybe five years. It was busted, it was shocking. I couldn't see myself, it didn't have a flip up screen. I couldn't connect it to my phone. I would just film and hope for the best. Um, and same with editing. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing with thumbnails. I didn't know how to upload a video. And you know, that could have put me off for a while, but I just thought, well, I'll just, just see how it goes. Just experiment, just try and just do it. So, you know, even though I had that little period at the beginning where I was off and on, off and on because of certain things, when I started in 2020, I knew I was not perfect. I knew my videos were pretty crap. You can go ahead and watch them if you want to. Um, but yeah, just start now. If you want to do YouTube, just start. Just start, just start, just start. You'll learn, you'll get better, but you can't wait until you're perfect at something to then start because you'll never get to that point if you don't just start doing it. So yeah, I really do recommend, if it's something you want to do, just do it. You won't regret it, you'll learn so much and it's so much fun as well. Tip number nine, that's so hard to do, nine, there we go. Tip number nine <laughs> is to have fun, have fun. Um, I think YouTube, yes, it can be a business and yes, it can be profitable and yes, it you know can be taken seriously, but I think it's also important to have fun and nobody wants to be working something they're not enjoying. And this goes for any career, in anything you decide to do, make sure you have fun. So, you know, with my videos, I'm out traveling and I'm vlogging and doing like fun stuff. And I think it's also quite a nice way to do fun things with your life because you need something fun for YouTube, even though you shouldn't plan your life around YouTube. Um, yeah, just have fun with it. You know, do silly challenges maybe or leave in bloopers sometimes or, you know, if you spill food on your face or down your t-shirt, you can zoom in on that and make it quite a funny thing to watch during the vlog. I don't know, just have fun, try different things, experiment, do what you want to do and enjoy it. So yeah, if you want to start YouTube, bloody well go and do it. You can do it, you've got it within you, I believe in you, you're going to be fantastic. And I really hope this video helped you kind of feel supported, feel inspired, but also you know, some of the little tips and tricks along the way. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.